Hello friends, today we will be discussing the MCA screening test 2013 paper set A. We will continue the discussion, you can find this in my blog clearmca.blogspot.in. The first video has been put up which is where we discuss the first two questions. Now we are going to third, fourth and fifth questions very quickly. Purpural pyrexia 38.4, this is the precise reason why I emphasized in my previous video do not mark up questions and answers because this option is not entirely right. Uh, the next question I'll be going through will be most common cause of purpural pyrexia and then you can go with the uh, breast buds thilarchy. So uh, let us go to uh, Google Books and search for this book Self Assessment and Review of Obstetrics by Sakshi Ramam. It's an older version, there are much newer versions present. Go to chapter 5, page number 98 and see, have a look at the question number 11. Postpartum pyrexia is defined as an oral temperature of and here the correct answer is going to be 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit see it's 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit not 38.4 degrees and it is uh, if you convert it to Celsius scale it's 38 degrees that's it and it's on two or more days from the second day onwards till 10th postpartum day by which I mean a female can have a transient rise in temperature during the first 24 hours you won't call it purpural pyrexia it's only from the second day onwards till the 10th day of postpartum if a female develops a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius for two or more days then you call it purpural pyrexia and purpural pyrexia may be due to any number of causes but the term purpural sepsis is different purpural pyrexia may be due to a chest infection, it may be due to a pyelonephritis, it may be due to a urinary tract infection, it may be due to purpural sepsis, it may be due to mastitis, it has various causes. Whereas purpural sepsis is a term reserved for infection of the genital tract following delivery. Now let's go to the next question. Postpartum, most common cause of postpartum endometritis is the previously to streptococcus. If you have an option called polymicrobial infection, that is the best answer. If you don't have it, then streptococcus. You have to you have to choose streptococcus. That is the next best answer. Have a look at question number 15. Purpural sepsis is due to spread of infection along which route? It's by direct extension. That is the most common route by which it spreads. Direct extension. And I will emphasize you to remember purpural sepsis is infection of the genital tract and purpural pyrexia is just rising temperature there are two different things purpural sepsis can be a cause of postpartum pyrexia or purpural pyrexia so going on to the question now purpural pyrexia now you know it's 30 degrees celsius or 100.4 degrees fahrenheit and the most common cause of purpural pyrexia is going to be infection you can have other causes going on to the next question breast buds thilarchy now the question could have been what is development of breast buds known as but I don't think you they're going to give you such easy questions the most common question that has been asked previously about this is the order in which the puberty develops in a female the stages in which the puberty develops in a female this you can find in Google go to Google uh, books search for self assessment review gynecology by Sakshar Ramam come to page number 75 of chapter 4 sexuality and intersexuality and you can see the first question in all india 2000 or you can have a look at the all india 2000 paper itself written by dr mudit kanna volume 1 and volume 2 the first question you'll find is the sequence of development of puberty in female is thilarchy pubarchy and menarchy uh, thilarchy is breast budding pubarchy is pubic and axillary hair there's a stage in between called increase in growth of height where the female first develops breast and then starts developing pubic hair and then grows in height and then has menarche or menstruation that's the exact order in which it happens i'd like to emphasize one thing pubarchy pubic hair development and axillary hair development both in females and males is dependent on antigen synthesis so there can technically be a condition where a male fetus which is resistant to testosterone can develop as a female externally because the testosterone gets converted to estrogen by aromatase enzyme and then what happens is due to increased levels of circulating estrogen can develop breasts well developed breasts 
and likely to present with amenorrhea because the male doesn't have a uterus to menstruate there's no endometrium to menstruate and so if you ever have a question where a female uh, is presenting with amenorrhea the breasts are well developed it shows that the estrogen is there but there is no pubic hair no axillary hair you have to suspect testicular feminization syndrome that is exactly what happened in question number nine a 15 year old female presents with primary amenorrhea her breasts are tanner 4 tanner staging is done for breast development but has no axillary hair or pubic hair the most likely diagnosis is now i'll tell you i'll rule the other options and then it'll become easy for you turner syndrome you're going to get ovarian dysgenesis which means there's going to be no ovaries and without ovaries you're not going to have much estrogen in a female and she cannot have a breast of tanner stage 4 Mullerian agenesis. Once again, Mullerian agenesis in uh, in Mullerian agenesis or Mayer Rokitansky Kushner Hauser syndrome, there is a problem with the Mullerian tube development where the female won't have fallopian tubes, uterus. Fallopian tubes may or may not be present. This is the trick question that they ask in PG, PG level. But for MCI purposes, no fallopian tubes, no uterus, and no upper part of vagina. The lower part of vagina can be there will be there and the female will have an ovary because ovary develops from ovary develops from intermediate mesoderm during the embryological development so uh, the female will have an ovary and she will secrete estrogen and she will have breasts of tana 4 but also have pubic hair because there is no problem with the androgen synthesis there is absolutely no problem with androgen synthesis in mayer kushner rokitansky syndrome or malarian agenesis. The last option, premature ovarian failure, is the same thing as Turner syndrome. If there's no ovaries, there's no estrogen. And uh, if there's no estrogen, there can't be a breast development of stage 4. And uh, so the remaining option is testicular feminization syndrome in which the male has primary amenorrhea, I mean, has presented to you with primary amenorrhea primarily because his, there was no testosterone secretion during the fetal life for him to develop external genitalia as a male and so he was raised as a female with breast as tana 4 staging but doesn't have axillary or pubic hair so these are the kind of concepts that you need to make from simple things and understand to answer questions in an effective way okay we'll go through the next questions a little in the next video thank you for listening